Assalamu alaikum. Uh, a warm welcome to Friends of Bangladeshi. Uh, each time we bring a very special friend of the country and the community, and today is no exception. We have a very special friend. But before I introduce him, let's go and see a video clip on him. Lord Curran Billimoria of Chelsea, founder and chairman of Cobra Beer. His father, Lieutenant Faridun Noshair Billimoria, popularly known as General Billy, was the General Officer Commanding in Chief of the Central Army Command of the Indian Army, who had served and commanded the Gorkha Rifles during the Bangladesh Liberation War in 1971. In 1990, Britain was in economic recession. Cobra took off in these circumstances by creating a niche for itself in the market. Indian curry was becoming increasingly popular in the country at the time, and so Cobra beer was marketed and sold as a perfect drink to go with it. Curran himself delivered cases of Cobra to Indian restaurants, where it became very popular with customers. Within five years, the one million mark in sales revenue was crossed. Cobra began to be served across the United Kingdom in thousands of Indian restaurants, and the business began to grow, expanding into pub and bar sector, and also being sold in major supermarket chains. We have just seen a video clip on the about the guest, but uh, now it's time to introduce him. He's none other than Lord Karan Balimuria, CBE, DL, FCA. Welcome to Channel S. Thank you. Where were you born? I was born in Hyderabad, uh, in, in India. India. And then when did you come to England? Uh, I came as a boy when I was 11 years old 11 for years a couple old. of years when my okay. father was posted here as a lieutenant colonel. Okay. After the liberation of Bangladesh, mm -hmm. he was posted here to the UK. Okay. And then I went back to India finished my schooling there and we did my degree in India and came here at 19. And uh, then you went to um, Cambridge as well, the Sydney Sussex College? Yes, that's right. Yes. I studied law there. And uh, when did you get married? I got married in 1993, 93. so it's coming up to 25 years. And she's Heather? Heather, yes. Yeah. How many children? We do have, you have four children. All boys, girls? Boy, girl, boy, girl. Oh, that's... Yes. From 21, that's from 19... 17 very good, and 13. Very good. You mentioned about your father, yes. the respected Lieutenant General Faridun Billy Moria, who played a vital part during the Liberation War of Bangladesh. And if I can show my viewers his book, and there is a number of pages about his involvement in Bangladesh. And we'll talk about it in a minute. Thank you. 1971. You were a young boy? Yes, I was 10 years old. 10 years old. The Liberation War started and we had great help from India. And without Indian support, we wouldn't have won the war or got the independence. And your father played a vital part and we appreciate his contribution. And um, in 1971, he headed, what did he have? Gorkha Rifles, yes, 1971, yes. and then moved to the border in East Pakistan, the then East Pakistan, near Bogra. Bogra and Pirganj. Pirganj, yes. yeah. And there were two battles, I think, one. Yes, yeah, one in Pirganj and one in Bogra. Bogra. In fact, they were moved up in advance. We went, he was commanding his battalion of the 2nd, 5th Gorkha Rifles Frontier Force, one of the famous Gurkha battalions, mm. which had won three Victoria Crosses in the Second World War. Mm. And in fact, his Subhadar Major was Aghan Singh Rai, Victoria Cross holder. And then they moved to the border. And my mother, my brother and I had to go to Hyderabad, to okay. our family home there. And then they prepared to liberate Bangladesh. Bangladesh. And uh, then the war took place in December 1971. The first one is at Pir Ganj. Pir Ganj, yes. He had a very, um, a very difficult battle there to capture Pir Ganj, and they suffered great casualties, including thereafter in Bogra. And in fact, at one stage, the pressure was so much, his brigadier, my father was a lieutenant colonel then, his brigadier said, I want you to take Pir Ganj by breakfast tomorrow. And my father said, no, I'm not going to do that, sir. He said, you're disobeying my orders. I want you to do it by breakfast. He said, no, I will lose too many men. I'm already going to lose too many people. I will give it to you by lunchtime. 
<laughs> my lunch time. Yeah, <laughs> that so was some bad. That was it. Yeah. So, where was he during the surrender of Pakistan army in uh, Dhaka? Well, at that time when they had captured Bogra, they also um, the the whole. Indian Army there captured the major general in charge of the Pakistani Army of the yeah. division there. So it was a he signed the surrender as well, and then the main surrender took place, of course, in Dhaka. Dhaka. My father's another battalion from yeah. the Fifth Gurkha Rifles Frontier Force liberated Silet. Silet. At the okay. same time, it was another my okay. father's sister battalion. Sister battalion liberated Silet. In Silet. fact, the author of the book that you just showed, yes. Major General Ian Cardozo, mm -hmm. he was a major and second in command. And walked in. He was there. As I part was of a the, teenager. He was a part of the liberation I was of Silet. A teenager of them. Yeah, yes. I was in Bangladesh. So going back to your education, then you decided to go into business. Yes. Uh, established Cobra. Yes. When was that? Cobra started in 1990. Okay. And we were importing it from Bangalore and India for seven years. Yes, and I remember those labels. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ahmed, I've known you for. From day one, <laughs> almost 28 Thank years. You. Thank you. Yeah, and long I, time, 28 years. And when we used to go door to door selling yeah, the beer that's right. in our battered old car. Yeah. So as a business, when you start a business, you had ups and downs, but you stuck to your business policy. And now you are very, very successful. Tell us about it. Success is, is not a destination. It's a journey. Journey. Sure. And it's always invariably a very tough journey. And as you say, there are ups and downs and challenges, and it's how you overcome those challenges. And I've nearly lost the business three times. Mm -hmm. And each time uh, has been different. Uh, but what gets you through, I found, is having a strong brand. Mm -hmm. So the Cobra Beer brand has been very strong. Having the support of your family, your team, and your business community. Yeah. So the Bangladeshi restaurant community, they are our foundation. They have supported us from day one. And it is their support mm. and operating with integrity and playing with a straight bat, as mm. we would say in cricket. If we are to go to somebody outside the community, it is you. That is why you, you get flooded with invitations, well, especially to do with curry industry. Well, I always yes. feel part of the community. Yes. From my childhood, I've yeah. heard about Bangladesh mm. from my father, mm -hmm. when he used to talk about the bravery of the Mukti Bani. Mm -hmm. When he used to talk about teenage boys serving side by side with his Gurkha troops and him. And he said, I've never seen bravery like that in my life. You studied at Cambridge and then you decided to start a business, a brand, which is established. Uh, when did you enter the House of Lords? For the first 10 years or so in building the business, I was not involved in anything outside the business. And then I was invited to get involved in public life. I sat on the National Employment Panel. I became. I was a, part of it as well. Yes. I yeah, I was a member of it That's as well. That's right. Yeah. And then, then I became a university chancellor. And then one thing Which that university? Initially, it was Thames Valley University, Thames the Valley. University of West London, when I was the youngest university chancellor in the country. Now I'm the chancellor of the University of Birmingham. Birmingham. And then after that, I was asked to, uh, to apply to the House of Lords to become a member there. And in 2006, I joined the House of Lords. Okay. So you are not a politician. You are a crossbencher? Yes, I'm an independent crossbench peer. So I do not belong to so any of the parties. So you do not belong. You can speak your mind. That's the best thing about being You a are not dictated by a political party. No, you vote whichever way you want to. And you do not you have to please anyone. You say yeah. whatever you want to. You challenge government. Do you think... There are enough lords and baronesses from uh, Bangladeshi community? Not at we all. We have just one. Just one. And yes. I think there should be many more. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at the House of Lords now, there are uh, over 800 members. And mm -hmm. if you take 14% as the ethnic minority population of the UK, there should be over 100 peers 100. from the ethnic minorities. Yeah. And there are not. And if so there are, are 600,000 Bangladeshis. Exactly. You can work out the proportion of how yeah. many there should be. And so I think that we need more Bangladeshi peers, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. We have only three MPs, and uh, luckily they are all ladies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Baroness in the House of Lords as well. Is a lady. Yes. And also going back to Bangladesh, the uh, Prime Minister and the leader of the uh, 
political parties, opposition there, ladies as well. Yes. He became a lord and he got involved with the Bangladeshi community. Since then, to date, what changes have you seen within the community? I mean, progress-wise. The Bangladeshi community, you can see, has been an extremely uh, entrepreneurial community. Uh, the restaurants that are started by the Bangladeshi community in every corner of Britain, every village, every town, every city has Indian restaurants, curry restaurants, but are run over well over two thirds. The vast majority mm. are owned and run by Bangladeshis. And the spirit that it requires, like you have done, Amit, to go to a place where you do not know anybody, mm. you're a complete stranger. Yeah. You have to take the risk get the funding, open a restaurant, hire your staff, win your customers, give them fabulous food, satisfy your customers, put back into the community, community. through charitable work, community work. Mm. You become a whole part of the community. It is what I call pioneering entrepreneurial spirit that has been demonstrated by people like you through the Bangladesh community. And that is what has made curry, the so household popular. name, the food that Britain loves, that people now cook in their homes, get from supermarkets, all thanks to the Bangladeshi restaurateurs, the pioneering entrepreneurs. Thank and you. now what you've seen is that also the community now, the sons of the and daughters. Yeah. I'll come to that okay. in a second. So the, 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 um, it, it's really mm. been wonderful what the community has achieved. Thank you. Uh, viewers, we are going for a short break. We'll be back soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are talking to Lord Karan Balimiri, a very good friend of Bangladesh's. We were talking about the curry industry. 12,000 restaurants. More or less like last decade, it's been suffering. It is declining. And one of your reports said at a rate of two closing each week. And um, we have organizations. Channel S is playing a vital and very big part. You know, we have a show called Catering Circle and we have united the community. Mm, we have the organizations, but somehow we cannot get, get the government on board. During the election time or pre-Brexit time, uh, they said, you know, everything will happen. With Commonwealth, you know, we are given hope that things may change. But the industry is definitely declining. Fact of the matter is our older generation are retiring and the younger generation, as you said, are moving to different areas. How do you think we can make sure that the food we serve is, remains popular and, you know, um, we sort of provide more employment and then I'll come to the government policies. Any industry um, as, as successful as the curry restaurant industry has become over the years, it's a multi-billion pound industry employing 100,000 people, contributing millions to the exchequer every year. It's a great benefit to British economy, to British society, which everyone loves and is grateful for. The restaurants, however, are facing challenges, and the challenges are in terms of recruiting the staff that they need from South Asia, from Bangladesh, from India, the chefs that they need. At the moment, because of the immigration laws, it's very difficult for the restaurants to recruit the chefs. And I think the government's immigration policy is not at all supportive no. to the industry. Uh, for example, the minimum salary you have to pay a chef it's is 35,000 pounds, and if you, it is reduced to 29,000 pounds if you don't offer a takeaway. Now, which mm. restaurant does not offer a takeaway? Takeaway. A Michelin starred restaurant will offer a takeaway. Offer a takeaway yeah. So then, even 29,000 pounds, compared with the average salary for a British chef, is much lower than that. Lower than and that. you've got to bring the person over, the expense involved. And we provide employment. Yes. Food as well. And so it is. I mean, I mean the accommodation. So I think it's yeah. very unfair on the industry having to fight with its hands tied behind its back. Yeah. And that too, you're competing because Britain is an open economy. 
There are cuisines from all over the world now available in Britain. And Indian restaurants, curry restaurants, have to provide excellent food at the most amazing value for money. I yeah. mean, the, what the exotic food the, the curry restaurants provided, very good value for money. So they have to be competitive, and it's a challenge. And if on top of that you can't get the staff that you need, I think that's unfair. Yeah, but um, also, you know, one or two ministers have said that, you know, that why don't you, or the government policies, why don't you employ, employ your people, young people from here? We try to employ, but the government is not giving any incentive to the young people to encourage them to move into catering industry. Eric Pickle, I'm sure he said that they they have to open an institute and no one is coming. How would they come if there is no incentive from the government? Well, the government, they, they have said this, and I remember when Eric Pickles was in the ministerial position that he yeah. had, and I applaud Channel S for the work that yeah. you're doing. The BCA, the Bangladesh Caterers Association, do so much good yeah. work in helping the industry. We at Cobra Beer, we have started chefs' workshops. Workshops. The, the Curry Life uh, magazine had their chefs' workshops. These are all very good initiatives to help um, the industry to continually improve and be more competitive. The government has talked about curry colleges. All this can carry on, but you still also need the ability to bring over the chefs from South Asia as well. It's not either or. Both should be allowed. allowed. And these are people who are benefiting an industry that benefits the economy, that benefits the country. Employment. And employment, taxes, jobs created. This is good for the country. You started saying about the younger generation. They are, uh, we are, they are diversifying. Tell us about it, what you have witnessed? Well, I, what I have witnessed is that the children of Bangladeshi restaurateurs um, of the Bangladeshi community on the whole, I have been privileged to take part in a ceremony that the Bangladesh High Commission uh, holds every year to celebrate the achievement of the Bangladeshi school leavers. Mm. And they're getting 10, 11 A-stars in GCSEs. They get three, four A-stars in mm. A-levels, going to Oxford and Cambridge and the top universities showing how brilliant these children are and how well they're doing uh, in a variety of different professions, whether it's law, accountancy, medicine. Uh, I know so many restaurateurs, children who are now famous doctors. This is wonderful that, the, the, that thanks to the restaurant community yeah. that yeah. The, the children Parents. are doing so yeah. well. And there are, of course, young Bangladeshi entrepreneurs. And there are young Bangladeshis also opening up their own restaurants. And the restaurants are also never standing still. You see the restaurants are constantly improving their menus, upgrading their decor, and uh, competing. So I think it, as an industry, it has to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing it visibly. Did you ever manage to visit Bangladesh? You know, it's one of my great disappointments in life that to this day I have not visited Bangladesh. And I, I, I'm being, I'm, I would love to visit. You are most welcome. I, most I, I welcome. can't wait to visit. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. So what you hear from, about Bangladesh you know, it is one of the 11 emerging country, um, growing fast, literacy, uh, and everything. What is your opinion about the country itself? Well, in, if you look at the Bangladesh economy and the way that it is growing, and many of the indicators of the UN indicators, Bangladesh is in South Asia, one of the highest performers, whichever way you look at it. Um, whether it's in industry, whether it's in education, whether it's uplifting people from poverty, it is doing extremely well. It's mm -hmm. got a huge potential going forward. Uh, and I think the potential for UK Bangladesh Corporation and the British Bangladesh Catalyst Chamber of Commerce that Mr. Rashid has set up, yeah. that is also a great initiative trying to foster business between the two countries, uh, which I think there's great potential. Do you think, you know, the revival of the Commonwealth would help Bangladesh? Absolutely. I mean, the Commonwealth is 53 countries in the world with a strong allegiance. And they but have... But they kicked us out, more or less, before, we, you know, uh, we don't want to know you, only Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. No. And because we have European Union. But no. now, no. things are changing. Totally. It's completely different because yeah. it's all 53 countries. 2.4 billion people 
and India, of course, is a big part, mm. 1.25 billion. Bangladesh is a big part. And I think the potential for the Commonwealth is huge. Because if you look at our trade, UK, 50% is with the European Union. So the European Union is always important to the UK. The whole of the Commonwealth, we only do 9% of our trade, the UK. So the potential to do more is huge. So is it going to be one-way street or two-way? Two-way. And I think the, that 9% will double very soon as those growing economies like Bangladesh and India continue to grow. The UK will do more and more trade bilaterally both ways with countries like Bangladesh looking forward. Do you think the government will understand about the severity the industry is facing, catering industry, I mean? How can we, we have been trying for years now, but nothing is happening. I think that I wish the government would change its immigration policy. We've seen that the government, in my view, has an immigration policy that is not good for the British economy. And this is the best example of it, is the unfair way it's dealing with the restaurant industry and the Bangladeshi curry restaurants. But look at what's happening in other areas. Look at the Windrush scandal, yeah, taking, yeah. which is absolutely awful. That is completely not acceptable. Absolutely not acceptable. Then on top of that, look at students. Yeah. International students are treated as immigrants yeah. when they're not. Yeah. They're included in the net migration figures, and the government has a target to reduce net migration to tens of thousands, and they include the international students in the immigration figures. I just want to get your opinion on uh, another matter. I'm sure you will remember um, about SBS, sector-based based scheme, whereby we could bring kitchen porters, washer up, bar, tender uh, for one year. Government knew that they would be coming from a very poor background. So after a year, they will not go back. They knew that. So they did not enter the country as an illegal immigrant. They are undocumented now, but they are skilled chefs, cooks, waiters, managers. So if the government allows them to work, the government is getting benefit you know, tax benefit and all sorts of things. And the people, uh, restaurateurs become, uh, get benefited because they have got legal staff. And the government do not have to spend so much money raiding businesses and then catching them and deporting them. So do you think if there is a possibility or do you, can you um, raise it at the Lord's or, the, or at the parliament that the undocumented people whom they brought, they entered legally, could be given a uh, stay permit. This again goes to the whole government immigration policy and the way in which the Home Office manages immigration. I think in many ways we have lost control of our borders, of our immigration in that there should be a priority for the good immigration that this country needs. The immigration, for example, the skills, the services that the curry restaurant industry needs, that should, the, the immigration policy should be there to help that. On the other hand, we have removed exit checks from our borders in 1998. Mm -hmm. Nobody checks your passport when you leave the UK. No. The last uh, head of the immigration border agency, his estimate was that there may be up to one million illegal immigrants in the UK which the government has no control over. So I think the government immigration policy is a complete mess and needs to be sorted out. And I think the Home Office, and now with this Windrush affair, has highlighted how awful and unfair it yeah. is. Destroying landing cards. Why would anyone destroy landing documentation cards. like that? It just goes to the heart of a sort of aggressive immigration policy that has existed since certainly around 2010 and the government needs to change its attitude to immigration. Mm. Uh, what message would you have for the community? Message is from my side personally is thank you to the community for including me as a member of the Bangladeshi community for the support you've shown me, sh support you've shown Cobra Beer. We would not be where we are without the support of the Bangladeshi community or the Bangladeshi restaurant community and I'll always be grateful. Thank you for that. Thank you, Emma. Viewers, we had a very interesting discussion with Lord Karen Ballymaria. We'll be back soon with another very important guest. Stay with Channel S. Thank you.